Hello, I am the Grey Master, and this is Age of Empires 2, The Age of Kings, HD Edition. Uh, Age of Empires was one of the first non-point-and-click adventure games that I ever played, and it was the first real-time strategy game, RTS, that I ever played. Um, and I used to be really good at it, too, uh, but that was eight, nine years ago, and I haven't really touched it since then. Uh... But, you know, the HD edition was on Steam. I picked it up a while ago and figured now's as good a time as ever to get back into it, try learning my way around it again. Um, so this is the introductory tutorial campaign, and the point of this campaign is to help the hero uh, William Wallace uh, fight in the war for Scottish independence and show those English bastards that... They can never take our freedom. Although, I am part English, or, you know, of English heritage, so I have a little bit of mixed feelings about this whole thing. But before I insult anyone else, let's uh, just play the game. The English are terrorizing all of Scotland! And it's time for us to fight back. Yes, it is but time for us to, to fight back. Every one of us will need to learn how to march and fight. I quite agree with you. Follow the path to the blue flag. First, click the soldier. Good. Now, right click near the blue flag. So far, so good. Good. Now, move to the next flag. Click the soldier. Then right click near the flag. Excellent. I suppose I can to take my hands off of Wazd. You must walk through the black area. Moving into the black area reveals more of the map. The black area represents unexplored yeah. territory. So going off of what he's saying about black areas and unexplored territory, there's really three stages of exploration. So right now there's the bright areas, that's where, that's the line of sight of, act, of units that you have. So um, you can see anything that happens in that area. The black is area that you haven't been to yet. Then this sort of dim area is an, a, a space that you've been to, but you don't currently have any units that can see there. So you can still see details of the landscape. Um, you know, roads, the grass, whatnot. You can see resources, and you can see if there were any enemy buildings in this area, I would be able to see them still. Now the catch is, I would see whatever was there the last time I walked through. So suppose I'm in a game right now, and another player decides to come and chop down these trees. I will still see the trees until I send another unit into this area, and then it'll be, oh, surprise, surprise, the trees are gone. Uh, so that's how exploration works. So because these flags are technically mine, I guess they're not really objects. Oh, I got some friends. To move all your soldiers at once, click near the units. Yeah, yeah. And drag around. Then right click to move. Drive I still remember most the of these flag. commands. Did all your units make it to the flag. The road ahead is guarded by an English outpost. Oh, uh, okay. Scroll up to the outpost so, outposts are buildings that I can use to expand my then line of sight. Click the red outpost. Right click the outpost to attack. Uh, but the thing about outposts is they don't fight back. So, that makes it easy pickings for my little ragtag band of rebels. is destroyed. That should slow the English raids. Keep following the path to the village. Well, they've really made it so I can't explore elsewhere. <laughs> home sweet home. But wait, the English are angry that you destroyed their outpost. They're coming to attack your village! Just click your soldiers and right click the red English soldiers to attack. Defeat the enemy soldiers and you will have won your first battle. 
So that warhorn sound means that there's combat going on with my units somewhere on the Good map. job! Now you know how to fight back against the English. That's the first level. <laughs> I was able to do it without screwing up, imagine that. So support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a village. Then right-click a forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. And then he returns the to the town center to deposit. For you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold, and stone stockpiles. The more villages you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Good! You found some gold. <sighs> so anyway, yeah. Wood is used for, you know, as you might expect, like boats, buildings, um, I believe also s some units that require arrows. Um, oh, and siege units require wood. Uh, food is used for basically any human or living units um, and you can get so so wood you get from trees of course food you can get from forage bushes like I'm doing right now we could also hunt uh, deer for food we can fish for food um, and then there's actually like a uh, sheep we can actually herd we can go near them they become my units and I can move them uh, gold Good job. And, uh, you don't have enough wood is I believe used for market stuff you found some and gold. for uh, for things that require metal I believe gold is just the thing that's used um, you get those from gold mines obviously and stone uh, which we're not asked for yet that's really not used until Excellent. You now have uh, later in the game uh, and it's used to make you know like castles and stuff uh, and you get those from stone mines um, the last resource really is population and so, or maybe not population per se, but population capacity. So like right now I have, uh, five, it says five out of five. That means I have five units and I have the capacity for five units. Um, and so the town center provides five population units. I wonder if it actually says when I, it doesn't say when I click on it. Um, but yeah, and then yeah, I can also build houses to to boost them, so I can have as many units as I can support. That's level two. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center. So this is level 3 of the tutorial and it's supposed to be talking about training soldiers or whatever. Um, so to do that we need a military building, in this case a barracks, that's the only one that we can get uh, at the moment. And that is where we'll create militia. Um, and so since I'm going to be creating more soldiers, I'm also making a house. Try building another house. Um, in the meantime, this guy's getting food because I'm gonna need that. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. Barracks complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the Create Militia button. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. That's one militia unit. 
create three more, and you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Take um, the barracks and quickly click the create militia button. Well, this guy shut up. To make three soldiers in a row. Okay, so uh, that, that's basically all we have to do for this scenario. Um, so normally right now there'd be a lot more of a civilization, there's a lot more to manage. Uh, so I wouldn't just be sitting around doing nothing while I wait for the, uh, the units to spawn. But, um, yeah. Well, now that you have a few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this area against English attacks. That's level three. So we have resource gathering, we have combat. Now it's time for the last main mechanic of the game. In level four, we're going to look at research and advancement. You're going to need to research some technologies of your own to increase the strength of your civilization. For example, researching loom makes your villages hard to kill. To research loom, click the town center, then click the research loom button. So, uh, the that's one uh, research item is loom, and we can get that at the town center. Good. And it basically increases the hit points of villagers. Resources, but improves your civilization. While you're researching, you can put your villagers to work and use your military units to explore. Uh. So, in order to complete this mission, we have to advance to the Feudal Age, and that's also done through the Town Center. Oh, we can actually start it now. So, there are four ages in the game. There's the Dark Age that we've been starting in. Um, from the Dark Age, we can advance to the Feudal Age. To do that, we need 500 food and two Dark Age buildings. Um, we started off with the barracks. That's one. I built a dock down here. That's another. So that's all we needed. And buildings become available when you advance to a new age. That's just what I was about to say. With different ages, different technologies unlock, different advancements unlock. Oh, and we seem to be under attack. English are making a sneak attack. What's I gonna say? Uh, so different upgrades, different research becomes available. Uh, after the feudal age comes the castle age, and that's where castles become available. Um, and after the castle age comes the imperial age. In addition to gathering food in forage bushes, villagers can herd sheep or hot deer for food. So it's generally a good idea to advance quickly because then you can get more advanced units than your opponents. And by the style change, you can tell we made it to the feudal age. Advancing to the next stage is the best way to improve your civilization. Believe that's what we had to do. At the lower right corner of the screen is the idle villager button. Aha. Uh -huh. I have no idle villagers. Are currently assigned to a task. Now that you're in the feudal age, you can upgrade your militia to men at arms. Click okay. the barracks, then click upgrade to men at arms. Upgrading to men at arms will change all your militia units to the more powerful men at arms. So every building is going to have its own units and its own upgrades that I can uh, choose from, and they all sort of go to the same queue. So, I can't do research while I'm making units. It's kind of like... Yeah. The English are attacking again. And now you can see, Teach I have upgraded. They're not militia. That's a very... St oh, okay. I'm going to ring the town bell before 
any of my villagers get attacked. So when I ring the town bell, villagers will go towards the town center and they'll actually like uh, they'll actually like arm it, and so the town center can attack. So those were the main tutorial levels, um, and I believe now the ne next up is the Battle of Stirling. Uh, it's actually the Battle of Stirling Bridge. It was a historical battle. That's the one that's featured in the movie Braveheart. And so now we're going to get to put all those skills together into an actual scenario. So um, that will be coming next.